Welcome back to today's video where we're creating a login form and what we've done so far is we've created this uh, shiny application where we're visualizing some metrics from my blog. So some metrics are visualized here and then we have some metrics here as value cards as well. And what we want to do is we want to create a login form so that when the user logs in the main page here can be individualized. So right now we have visualizations on the main page and then we also have some visualizations here in the sidebar. And the user can decide what visualizations they want to display here on the main page. So depending what user logs in, they're seeing different visualizations here in the main page and then different action links here in the sidebar. And again, there's a link in the description below to my blog where you can read up on today's video and then there's also a link in the description to my github to today's code and what we want to do is we want to use the shiny author package to create the login form and we're here on the github page of the shiny author package this one is also on cran and what we'll be doing today will be implementing the code example in here where we have the user base table in here with the username and the password then we have here the fluid page with the UI where we have the logout button and we're not going to put the logout button into our application and then we have the login module in here here this one just displays a table with the the user base table I believe down here and then here in the server we have the login server and the logout server and then you see here when they want to render the table they have an extra requirement in here that this table only renders when the credentials dollar sign user auth is equals to is equal to true so when the app starts by default this is false and when a user has logged in successfully, it is going to be true. And the table is going to be rendered. And then in the next video, what we're going to do, we're implementing the cookie based authentication. And for this one, they've used a SQL database. We're going to use a Mongo database to get the session IDs for the cookies and then also the user login data so the user id and the um, password and for the next one we'll also use sodium for the hashing of the passwords so if we go back into r what we'll first do we'll first load the shiny author package And then I'm just copy pasting the code example from the GitHub page. And I'll put this in here. So we can delete library shiny. And then if we run user base, it's just a table with two users, user one and user two. And I can also add an additional user. So I can put my name in here and then also a password. Then I have to add the permission and then I'll just say user, user three. Now for the um, UI, we only need to copy this one here. We don't need the table and we won't display the logout button. So what we'll do is we'll put this module in here. And then from the server, what we'll copy is the login server and the logout server. And again, we don't need the table. So we'll put this in here. And then we can delete everything except for the user base table. So let's save this 
and let's just run it and see how it looks okay we have to delete this as well and we're going to run it so we'll see we have the logging form here and then the model shows up that tells us that we're retrieving data from the API and then here is the main application so what we have to do next is we have to hide all the HTML that's on the main page if the user hasn't logged in successfully yet and then when the user has then we're displaying the HTML but for now let's just log in and then what happens is that the logging form disappears and we only see the main app content in here So in order to hide all the um, content on the main page, we'll wrap the get data UI module until the main visualization UI module. We wrap all of this in a div. And then we'll give this div an ID. We'll say ID equals show page content. And then what we'll do is we'll pipe this into a shiny JS function into the hidden function. So when the app starts, all of the code that in, that's in here is going to be hidden. Next, what we're going to do, we're going to go into the server and then we'll have an observer here. And this observer only gets triggered when the user has logged in successfully. So we have a requirement here and the requirement is that credentials dollar sign user auth has to be equal to true. If it's equal to true, what we're going to do is we're going to use the shiny JS package and the show function. And I will say ID is equal to show page content. And then everything that's in this division that was first hidden will be shown. So we'll save this. And then what we can do is we can run the app and see how it looks. So we can still see that we're getting the modal in here, but all the other content has disappeared. So now if we put in my username and then the password and we log in, then we're triggering the observer, the, uh, the credentials dollar sign auth is switching from false to true and the main content on the, in the app um, appears. So now we just have to make sure that the modal when we start the app does not appear. And how we're going to do this is we have to go into the get data module where we have the model spinner here. And what we have to do in here is we have an event reactive and this gets triggered if either this action button gets clicked or if the, if the credentials change from false to true. And then we put a requirement in here again, where this only runs when this is equal to true. And we'll save this. And what we're going to do next is going to go back in here. Then we'll copy this and then we'll put this here into the get data server. So what we'll do is we'll say auth is equal to shiny reactive.
And then what we also have to do is we have to do the same in the main visualization module. Then we also put auth in here. And then we already have a requirement for the code to run. And we'll say if auth is equal to true and action button is equal to one, we'll run this. And then in here, well, also, this observer also gets triggered when this switches from false to true. So we'll save this. We go back into the app.r file and then we'll run the code. And we'll get an error. So the error is um, unused argument. So yeah, I forgot to put this in the main visualization server. So put the argument in here, but I forgot to add it in here. So now if we run the application again, we will get another error. And this one says um, un used argument and get data server. So let's go into get data module and I forgot to add it up here. So uh, hopefully this works now. So if we run the app, we get the user login and now the modal spinner has disappeared. So if I put in my username and also my password and I click on login, we don't actually see the modal. And that might be, uh, let's see. Here we're requiring it, here we're requiring it. And this is because in here, because it's reactive, we have, we don't, we can't forget the round brackets. So if we go back and run the app again, I'll put in my username, my password, And then the model spinner appears, then the value cards appear, and then the visualizations appear as well. So in the next video, what I want to do is I want to try out the cookie-based authentication method so we don't have to log in every time um, we log out of the application or we're closing the tab. And then I also want to connect to a Mongo database to retrieve the session information and also the username and the uh, um, the password and then later on we're also having another field um, that we're pulling into the app um, to display the uh, visualizations on the main page so if a user um, logs out of the application then whatever inform whatever visualizations are on the main page is being sent to the server so next time if a user logs in, the same visualizations in the same order appear on the main page. And again, there's a link in the description to my blog and also to my GitHub. And I'll see you next time.